Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of It's Not Only Football, Friday Night Lights and Beyond. Today, we are doing a recap. Kippy cap cap. Kippy cap cap of season (laughs) one. Uh, Taking some of your burning questions from the comment section in the Apple Podcast Rate and Review and the YouTube comment section uh, for a little press box action. And we're going to kind of sum up our feelings uh, on the on the whole of season one so as well do as I have catching to up. Do a recap of the whole first season or no? Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes in just a second. Okay. In just a second. But we're also going to do some uh, missed scenes that have been hotly requested uh, for us to catch up on that we did not cover throughout uh, our first twenty two rewatch episodes. So uh, that's what we're doing today, and I can't wait for this. Me Zach, <laughs> take it away. You really put myself on the spot on this one. No, baby, go. You got this. New head coach, Coach Eric Taylor, takes the Panther football team and all their faithful through an arduous season of hopes and fears and heartbreak and some joy. And a lot of stuff happens, and there's some relationships forged that wouldn't be expected and others that are quite predictable. Hearts are broken. Hearts are mended. Well, for everybody out there listening... um, I want to start off with this. Um, The three of us have all seen the first season before, and I'm sure most of you out there listening have. It's been quite some time for me. I think I watched this the first year that... I think I watched it live as much as I could. Um, I watched it on my DVR. That Mm -hmm. year, though, right? Yeah, often that night. And May watched it very (laughs) early on as well. It was appointment television for May. This many years later, watching it again... What was the one thing that you believed coming into this rewatch that held true? And what was one thing that maybe surprised you on the season overall? Well, I'll tell you right now that, okay, and everybody's going to be all like up in arms about this possibly. But I remember, you know, I I have like catcher in the rye syndrome with it where like at the time watching it, I was like, Coach Taylor's perfect. Everything he's ever done is perfect. And he's perfect. And everybody needs to respect, you know, and like. Still love Coach Taylor more than anything. If In fact, I love him more because of his imperfections, you know? Uh, but I think, like, it's interesting how then watching it with a new perspective, kind of, like, as a quote-unquote adult, you know, I'm like, oh, there's actually a lot of things that weren't handled in this way that I feel like we usually idolize Coach Taylor, you know? And so I think it was actually I, – I appreciate the show even more because I think it makes him a much more realistic person. Um, to not be perfect, but it was funny because I used to kind of have that like teen dream thing about him and it just exploded. I had that same thing. I mean, I think I've said it so many times on this where I'm like, coach is not a good coach or like not the, <laughs> not a bad person, but like he's not this saint and this like sage that mm-hmm. we all remember him as. For me, I remember most of my storylines pretty well because I was there, I was doing them. And as you said, like I watched this however many years ago. And so it was fun rewatching it and, there's a s- certain storylines that I wasn't heavily involved in that have always stuck with me, but there's so many more that I'm like, oh, right, that was so awesome. I mean, I've re-fallen in love with Annie's character, Tyra. I genuinely, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I, I don't, can't remember if I said this. <laughs> when um, when Tammy gets pregnant in the finale, I, t- I was like, wait, they get pregnant? You didn't remember <laughs> Gracie Bell or Gracie? No, it wasn't Tom. until I saw her born in the next episode. I was like, oh, <laughs> right, baby Gracie. They had a baby. <laughs> uh, for me, I think it's kind of on the same lines, along the same lines as, as you guys. Is I, The one thing that did hold true was Coach and Tammy are such an incredible and real and honest look into uh, a marriage and parents and parenting and all of the mistakes that can be made, uh, which was pretty incredible to kind of see again. But yes, Coach is not as infallible as I think we all thought he was coming into the season. Uh, the I other thing that caught of that me too, off- though, is like we all looked, I mean, I, I know all of the young cast, at least we looked up to him. As like a human. Uh, yeah. I thought you were going to say we us. all looked 45, and I was going to be like, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. We all look 45. But we no, all I think look 45. he was such, he is such an amazing guy and was such a great um, role model to all of us while we were shooting the show. I wonder how much that um, 
kind of tinted the lens in which we viewed his character. Right. Great mentor for us as young actors. And we immediately just applied that to Coach Taylor being just an incredible mentor. Uh, I love the way that Coach and Tammy struggle through a number of things. I mean, Mm -hmm. much as we do as adults, we don't have it all figured out. I think we talked about this earlier in the season. As parents, you don't have it figured out. As adults still trying to navigate new situations, like nobody has it all figured out. Nobody knows everything. But the good definitely outweighs the bad. And uh, Coach and Tammy are so incredibly solid. The other thing that surprised me was I forgot that quad rugby just kind of disappears. (laughs) And I'm like... Wait, oh, what yeah. does Jason Street do with the rest of his life? And I can't wait to find out. So I remember. <laughs> go further on. I remember. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not yeah. going to tell everyone. Oh, uh, yeah. No spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. Um, so, along that same line, and this is going to be a very hard thing to do, and everybody out there listening, I, I bet it's going to be difficult for you as well. If you had to pick one episode from season one uh, as your favorite episode, I knew you were going to do this. What would it be? Is it impossible, May? Well, it's not impossible. It's just difficult because, you know, like Zachary Michael's beautiful summary, I think so (laughs) many hearts were mended and broken. And there's so many, like, special moments from each episode that I feel like it's hard to, like, you know, it's like choosing between your children, which I know everybody actually has a favorite child, but, like, you can't tell the world, which is your favorite child, you know. Oh, we say that one is our favorite and the other is the best. Ooh. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to start then, Zach? I love this Oh, guy. with what episode? Oh, you're yeah, talking about children. Child. <laughs> I can help my son. Well, no, they know. My daughter's my favorite and my son is the best. <laughs> <laughs> they both are very aware and they're young and they get it. <laughs> totally. Okay. Very smart. I'll start then with this whole episode thing. I could go with wind sprints. I love wind mm. sprints. I mean, it's, it yeah. is... Those players running in the rain, coach out there, leading yes. them in that way, teaching Riggins tough lessons. Um, it leads it leads to intrigue. The whole Riggins Lila thing starts off. You know, Street is in the hospital. The town, the fallout of that initial injury, is so well done, and mm-hmm. so many characters are spotlighted. And I love that episode. I could go with one that is like just for me contains my favorite scene that I ever got to do as Jason Street and changes, but I'm not sure that I think that's the best episode of the season. The one that I think I'm going to go with is Crossing the Line. And Zach said something when we were doing Crossing the Line about how impressive the camera work was uh, throughout the entire episode. There was a consistency to a lot of cameras being over the shoulders as characters are making big decisions, some of them right, some of them wrong, some of them emotion-filled, some of them very calculated. And I just think crossing the line was a turning point for the season in so many different ways for so many different characters. And uh, Street got the punch, Riggins. So, you know, uh, it it was, (laughs) I think that episode for me, I I really like it a lot. I think that might be my favorite. I think Wind Sprints might be the best. Oh. Well, yes, true Scott fashion, girl. he found a way to talk about three things when he was yes. only supposed to talk about one. <laughs> and uh, the crowd goes boy. wild. I think my favorite, I'm not sure which, I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one where you and Herc are, fall out of the wheelchairs and you're having that little like. That's crossing the that's line. That's crossing the line. Yep. That's my favorite. Um, and then I think the best is the pilot. It's just so amazing, in my opinion. Solid choices. Very nice, very succinct. Okay, my problem is that I'm copying Scott in that, but I swear I've said this like before in an interview. I can pull it up if you don't believe me, but I have to say that Wind Sprints is like, that is like, has always classically been my favorite just because of the feelings that I get when they're out there and it's late and everybody's like, it's almost like a weird like dream where it's like, are we, is this actually happening? Are we doing this? Like, I feel like I know, I remember like instances of that in my life where it's like this strange thing that's totally out of place and sort of disconcerting, but actually ends up becoming this like really powerful and weird memory that you always have. So like, I think that was probably my favorite and the best is probably like, probably Don't say state. (laughs) Zach will come through this computer. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I literally was going to say it just to see what I could stir up. Oh, um, I wish I, I would have let it happen. <laughs> I'm just going to say that it's my best. It's the best and my favorite just because, you know, I. I I'm yeah, I think the thing with Wind Sprints also is, is after we saw the pilot. See, we saw the pilot so many months before we even went back to work. 
So for me, watching the pilot, I was like, this is such a special pilot. How the fuck are they going to follow this up? And somehow they just totally not only stick the landing, but perfect tens. And I think that has a big part to play in why I think it's it's so great is because the promise of the pilot is immediately continued. Yeah. And it sets the tone for the rest of the season. So I mean, Mud Bowl is really good too, right? I've seen a lot of comments where they say Mud Bowl is their ultimate favorite episode. A lot okay. of the fans out there have had a, a number of things to say that they loved, uh, you know, throughout the season, but they were not shy about telling us what their least favorite storylines were. Oof. Oh, I like this part. This is fun. Yeah. yeah bloopers, so you know? spill the this tea. This is Zach. This is your section, bro. Oh. You're like the pessimist of the group. I want to break this down Cynic. though into you know we did episodes. But I'd love to break this down into three categories. What was your favorite overarching storyline? What was your least favorite overarching storyline? And what's a storyline that you wish they might have just explored a little further? I didn't know it was going to be a pop quiz today. Yeah. This is what gone this is, out raging. This is what the people are here for. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Does that go first? <laughs> Can you go first? Man. Yeah, okay. So my first. favorite storyline, my least favorite storyline, and storyline I just couldn't get enough of. Or wish they would have explored further, maybe. <laughs> Oh, like man. if you if you wanted to see the crazy adventures of Grandma Saracen and Tyra mm. Collette on the run, like see this is where these scenes get really hard because you know you and I were talking about it a little bit before, and it's kind of that um, it's storytelling. And as much as I would love to watch, you know, side like a like a spinoff of Grandma and Tyra, <laughs> it really it would it would not this it would not be Friday Night Lights. Um, it's okay if it is. Okay, I really got to think about this guy. You must know yours already. Wait, so, I have one. Oh, I have, have one. one. I actually thought about it, and I actually have it. Okay, I always want my favorite is um unfortunately Riggins and Lila. Sorry, it's iconic, and everybody can just eat it. Huh. Um, oh. I I wanted to see more of um. Landry and Tyra and then I remembered that I am sorry and you need to be careful what you ask for because we're going to get it <laughs> and that this is my all my fault. I'm sorry. Be what careful what you wish two. for. <laughs> Correct. And uh, and then the one that I didn't like very much. I didn't like it when you sat in that jacuzzi. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. That was messed up. You know up. what I mean? <laughs> I, like, would, I think classy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good happens in a hot tub. Um <laughs> I would like to see more of the waiver lash. Um, Smart, love that name. Look at you. Is that what it, I, I got that right? Waiver lash. That's it's that's what really that's good. what Gaius said they called themselves. Um, but uh, beautiful. She's just such an amazing actress. I think that character is such an interesting, complex one, and the balance she was to Smash, and how much I love Smash, and I do feel mm -hmm. like he his character sometimes he had great storylines, but he also would kind of have a couple episodes at a time where he was just very much in the background. Mm -hmm. um, What's interesting about that is they introduced Waverly a number of episodes earlier right. in the script, but then they picked that up and they moved it like three episodes ahead. So mm -hmm. you could have had more Waverlash. That's a oh, Well, I wanted to keep one. going too. She gives this guy a hall pass and then she takes off. She's yeah, the, she's okay. in the wind. Well, plus, you know, then you would have gotten more Mama Smash if there was more Waverlash, which, yeah. you know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's what I wish I had more of. My favorite storyline... I mean, that's kind of, that is really, truly like Sophie's choice. You know, I, I really loved, and I know this is biased in a way, but I loved the exploration of quad rugby through the relationship with uh, Street and Herc and how they were able to utilize that to really uh, put you in a place where Jason is a full character. He's not some tragedy. He's not some prop or some storyline that, you would see maybe in other shows. No, they fully build it out and they let you in on a journey that I think a lot of viewers would never have been privy to had not Jason Street had Herc in his life and been able to uh, have the changes that he was going through explained in that way. So uh, Herc was a was a big part of it for me. Uh, my least favorite storyline, it was over in a flash, but I, I and it kind of leans into the, I wish we could have seen more. I wish we could have seen more of Reyes. I think on a team that was so forgiving to a coach like Mac McGill, why it couldn't be forgiving to a player like Bobby Reyes, um, you know, I think there might have been a lot of intrigue there. Coach took a very hard line and kicked the kid off the team. And if there would have, uh, would have been a redemption arc or if you could have seen 
him struggle a little further, but it was up and down and over in a hurry. And the other thing, and this is just me having watched the season, um, Tyra is awesome. And Tyra and Jason had one scene together and you're like, oh, are these, are these two going to be, are these going to, are they, are, are they going to be friends? Are they going to like so you, have a cool little outsider storyline where Jason's not on the team anymore and Tyra doesn't want to be a part of the team? And because Jason does for a little while become a, a character who is so detached from the football team and Tyra is so rep, like she is such a representation of the people in town that don't want anything to do with the team. And I think that would have been fun for a little while for the two of them to find a common ground and understanding. So Wish I would have seen more of that. I think Can those I are my answers. Can I ask you a answers. question, uh, piggybacking yeah. on that? It has to do with the, I realize one storyline that I really don't like is the, is your, is the, you getting the ta that crazy tattoo. And then I just yeah. remembered, like, <laughs> you, did you, did you, I mean, you must have had to, but like, were you then stuck having, because I remember on Good Girls, my character had this like enormous tattoo on her back. And it was like, I was like, well, now am I going to have to like anytime I, and so I was just like, we can just never show my, like, we have to have like long shirts at all times because I can't put this on every day, but like streets out there on the field, he must be wearing short sleeves. Were you just slapping that bad boy on every episode from yep. then on? Or every, what? every single day I would get two applications. I would get Ugh. a scar on my neck and I would get uh, on the back of my neck where your C7 T1 uh, junction would be. And I would get that tattoo put on my forearm. They'd shave all my hair off and they'd peace. apply this peace and Sanskrit tattoo <laughs> so yeah, I didn't want to make all the, my points about storylines I was a part of, but yeah, I got you. Uh, Susie Q wasn't exactly one of my favorite storylines, although not Alexandra, working. not her. I mean, she was no, awesome. Alex great. was great. Alex was but great, not working. Uh, but yeah, you know, <laughs> well, um, that always happens. I mean, it happens. We'll see in season two. I have some like that where you know they try something and it just doesn't really not quite working. click, and then we move on and we get back to what does work. I remember this is. Um, I think one of my least favorite storylines, and not because I thought it was not good or whatever, it just made me angry, was the um, <laughs> the Tim Lila storyline. Really? Yeah. Unpopular That's my favorite. Opinion. No, What's I'm not. What's your problem? The drama is, I think opinion. it's just, it made me, like, I was like, guys, you're making such bad decisions. Have a little, like, you know, understanding of the human element. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were in a, they were <laughs> okay. not given the proper tools and they nope. were lost and alone and struggling. And they, and he was walking each other home for late at night from some wind sprints. She's yeah, cruising by in her cold. PT cruiser. And She's cruising. There you go. It's yeah. what they're made for. PT cruisers are <laughs> yeah. made for cruising. They're clearly made for making out in the back of <laughs> PT cruisers are made for. Okay, cruising. I don't want to hear about your. Paul Thomas <laughs> Cruiser stories. <laughs> um, so as promised, uh, we're going to move into missing scenes here in just a second. Um, things that, you know, because this season was so jam-packed, every episode seemed very, very, very packed to the brim with amazing scene work. Uh, incredible actors up and down um, with, the with the exception of me and Zach. Uh, we're all right. <laughs> we're okay. We're okay. Everybody else. Pretty you're great. someone's yeah, favorite. You may not be someone's best, but you're definitely someone's favorite. <laughs> yeah, my mom. Uh, I got you. <laughs> incredible writing. The scenes that they chose to keep in the show, they're all fantastic. So we are bound to miss one or two scenes. And a couple of them actually were in the pilot. So uh, for everybody out there listening, we're going to jump into five different scenes that were heavily requested by you that we missed in our coverage of season one of Friday Night Lights. And there. in our defense, you know, we can only talk for so long. Um, so the five scenes that were requested for us to cover um, were two scenes from the pilot. One, and I cannot believe we did not cover this scene, is the most iconic Tim Rib Riggins, Ribbons? Tim Riblets. <laughs> <laughs> Love Tim Riblets. Delicious. Tim, <laughs> big Riblets, Riggins. <laughs> the most iconic Tim Riggins moment in the show's history, as well as one of the most iconic scenes, period, in Friday Night Lights, the very first Texas Forever scene mm. by the fire pit yeah. in the backyard. Yeah, you know what? I can backyard. tell you why. It's a great scene. The scene itself is not, that, I mean, it's where Texas Forever happens, but it's not in the scheme of the pilot. It's not like, oh my God, what an amazing scene. It's four friends sitting around a fire talking. 
That's all it is. It's not just about football. This is about friends no, I know. sitting around the fire and talking. Don't you get it? You yeah, need to see the it. nostalgia. You need to see that they had these moments that they will look back on. Zach, we got to go back to a time when you've just watched the pilot for the first time, right? And this is where having May here is super important because we lived this thing. She watched it. Uh, what made this scene so iconic? Was it just the Riggins of it all? Was well, quick, it quick pause? I didn't live this scene. I wasn't invited. That, well, I mean, <laughs> Saracen's not there. <laughs> you read the script, though, right? Like, I know. I'm just kidding, dude. <laughs> You're not cool enough, bro. I was Come just on. never cool enough. But anyway, it's all good. no, it's a great scene. I'm gonna let May talk about it. I'm just saying, you know. No, I'm with you. Listen, I I understand what you're saying because it's not like some huge thing happens that's like, oh my God. But like, you know, I think it is just a nice moment of like, it's almost like also like a little nice moment of peace and calm, like before all the mending and ripping that you talked about and the slurping and the wrong behavior and all that. Like <laughs> there's this moment of like, just the them like almost like innocence like that teen innocence and like the I just I I love that's kind of what this show feels like to me is like so that summer nostalgia younger feeling of when it was like simple and you were a teen and you were sitting around and you were just like so full of like belief for your you know thing and whatever else it's kind of just like a nice moment of stillness before everybody starts kissing each other's well, Girlfriend and also I totally get the necessity of it storytell storytelling wise because you know it's setting up how Riggins is so ride or die with Street and has these big dreams right. for them, and that we come to learn he's full of shit because he's going to sleep with your girlfriend no. as soon as you get paralyzed. <laughs> this is why I think the scene isn't like a fan favorite for so many. It's it's a tone setter as well as uh, allowing you to know like really what was lost on a personal level for people in this mm. relationship. It's exactly what you said. For whatever reason, these two guys are best friends and you feel it in this scene. It's really well written. Riggins, Taylor Kitsch, just hits it out of the park. It's pretty much as scripted. I think that this was Riggins' audition scene, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I mean, we have to get Taylor Laura on. has it. Laura I got to get Taylor on it. to ask him about that. Um, the only thing that's different in the scripted version versus what we see is Billy Riggins is there in the script, tells his brother <laughs> to slow down. It's only a Thursday. It's Thursday. You're already three beers in. Slow down. And he's like, back off. This is my blocking fuel. That's the only thing that is taken out of the scene. And I think it's because Billy Riggins probably shouldn't be back there serving all these minors no, beers. No, he should not. That is irresponsible. <laughs> but also, it also, and sorry if you're going here, but it also gives us a really nice insight into your relationship with Lila, like how loving mm. you guys are, and also with Tyra's character. I mean, it really is a very important scene. Look at you coming around. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just saying. I love it's, to see I, you I think grow. it would be easy for us to like kind of jump over because there's so much going on and so yeah. many storylines. That's why we missed it. But that is one of the beautiful things about like it's well written. It's there for a very clear reason, and the way he mm. shot it makes it really clear. Like a lot of different dynamics that are you know kind of pivotal throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, it's an incredible what could have been scene. Mm. To top it off, you get Kitch delivering what it, it maybe is the most famous outside of Clear Eyes Full Hearts Can't Lose line that people always say about Friday Night Lights, Texas Forever. And it's Texas understated forever. the way he delivers it. And then he's like, hey, boys, let's touch God this time. Ah, it's the best. <laughs> but Texas Forever, man, I mean, this is this is that scene. This scene is iconic, and it's iconic for a reason. Um, so we hope that uh, that scene breakdown uh, was awesome for all y'all out there listening that missed it so severely when we jumped over it in the pilot episode. There's and we're sorry. I'm so sorry. I am like, I I sorry hold too. Space for that accountability. The I'm reason sorry. we missed it is because we split the pilot in half. No, this you wanted to talk about every camera move in the pilot. <laughs> I did. Want to and talk I was about like, that. dude, we gotta go. Like, it's all I gotta pee. Out. No, no one's listening this long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. And you're it right. Fell through the cracks, and we're picking up the cracks. I made some mistakes along the way, but the pilot was shot Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, mm -hmm. and this happened on Wednesday, and we skipped Wednesday. Another scene that happened on Wednesday that we also skipped was Jason Street and Lila Garrity out in front of uh, Lila's house. 
This is starting like, to seem like a street scenes we missed. I'm uh, kidding. Trust me. With you. It's more like a Riggins scenes we missed. Yo, this review episode is lit. Wait, isn't this, yeah. isn't this you and, and Lila? <laughs> this, is, yeah, this is Lila and I. This was the scene that actually Minka and I. Scene, right? Yeah, Minka and I like helped wow. each other win the role in this scene. When we got called in to do a chemistry read at the test, uh, this is the scene where I, I drop her off I, I at the end of the first day of like big press and everything. And she starts interviewing me. Mr. Street, is it true you can it's throw a football powers. 400 yards and you have superpowers and you shoot fire at balls out of your eyes? We did this uh, together as part of our chemistry read. And Pete had us just start improv And luckily, I'm a big nerd, so I was able to improv a lot. This is also the thunderous kissing scene. Yep. We talked about <laughs> this scene. People swore that we didn't. Well, I mean, we talked about it during your audition. More. Story, we talked about it when I was giving you a hard time for kissing so loudly. No, you, yeah. we kissed in the hospital when she's laying on top uh, of me. That's when you gave me. This is also thunderous kissing, though. That was loud, too. Why <laughs> were is, you doing that again? And in th this scene. Because <laughs> uh, he was, quote unquote, just going for it. Pete Berg, I guess. <laughs> right, thank you. Pete Berg yelled at Minka and was like, we need more heat in this scene. Bite him on the neck. Do do something. I, I was very clearly nervous, I think, in this situation. This was like my first ever kissing scene on camera. So I obviously was not up to the task. Pete was not very happy. He was like, bite him, scratch him, do something. Jesus. Be enjoying like a this, person Porter. Yeah, scratch enjoy his face off. <laughs> uh, let's move into a, a missed uh, opportunity for Zach, actually. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. People requested we, we talk go. about the line and the scene, Saracen to Julie, and I think we should have sex. You've got the ugliest feet ever. Um, <laughs> well, what is wrong with you? No, I believe um, because we talked about having my socks on He's struggling. during having him. sex, and she was giving me a hard time for that. And I was just trying to like lead by example for her because I would have preferred her to keep socks on during sex because I didn't want to look at her ugly feet during sex. Oh, is that all? <laughs> yeah, so the scene takes place in this cabin. You got the keys from Bradley. You and Julie go out with the intent to have sex, have sex for the first time for both of you in your lives. Yep. Her mom saw me buying condoms. Yep. And, uh, and we talked a lot about all of this, but I guess this is like the aftermath scene, right? This is where... It, Y'all like have decided not like to tickling not to do it, and you're just yeah. like, what? What are you? Are, thumb no. wrestling? I think it's called, foot wrestling. Yeah, it's like leg are wrestling. Are you tickling? Leg wrestling. Oh, leg. Yeah. Was it I think scripted that be... you leg wrestle or? I, yeah, That's I wouldn't weird. come up with that. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Amy, let's leg wrestle. That'd be <laughs> charming. <laughs> that reminds me that in the scene in Parenthood when Miles has to lose his virginity, it was written in the script. They are that the activity that they're doing pre prior to losing their virginity, literally, I kid you not, said she is. And these are like eighteen year old children saying she is feeding him Jordan almonds. And yeah, we I like, think you mentioned this during the. What? I think we should have Jor said yeah. during the. Uh, it's a Jordan very almonds. specific candy to have. That's like with the it's hard candy specific. coating. With the yes, almond like in the pastel. middle, it's like an Easter moment. Yeah, they're like impossible thing. to eat. Those. Oh, things. I knew. I was like, it's like a gobstopper just... with a with a yeah. almond in the middle. It's I like who like wants that? Almonds from no, the no. country Jordan. <laughs> I, <laughs> you were like, that's beautiful. I was so confused. <laughs> it might be. It What's might wrong with originate. American or almonds? <laughs> I don't know. Tell us in the comments below where did Jordan almonds <laughs> actually originate from? Because... That's a good drag name, actually. Jordan almonds. Ooh, that is a good. Jordan. I'm gonna write that down. Almonds. Um, We've we've talked about this a lot, like the relationship and the evolution of it between you and Julie. But did that scene feel like okay, the pressure's off now, and we could just do whatever you want? Were you guys improving a bunch of stuff, or was I it? Think we were just giving each other. Yeah, we were just having fun. It was. I mean, it was goofy. It was what it was, and you know, you're, like I didn't know what leg wrestling was, and I think an AD or director had to get on the floor and like show us how it's done. Yeah, that was fun. I mean, it, you know, by that point, Amy and I were were pretty tight. Um, so, you know, anything I got to do with her, especially if it's not, you know, it, it, it was nice to live in the exhale of like, oh, we don't have to like pretend make out, pretend to have sex. You know, it's always awkward, even if you're like close friends with someone to just like fake kiss them. So it's more fun to be like, oh, like it was a little like, cool. We don't even have to do the pretend stuff. We could just goof around. Yeah. Um, another scene that was, uh, missed by the fans of the pod, uh, which <laughs> I was told many times I need to not be saying, the pod. pod, yeah. Uh, uh, the number of people said, uh, 
Scott, I please stop it. paying saying pod. What comes to mind when you picture the perfect roommate? One who comes when you call him? One who doesn't forget to lock the doors? One who doesn't steal your milk just a little bit at a time, hoping you won't notice? Well, at Apartments.com, we understand that when it comes to roommates, a pet can be your best bet. They're easygoing, they eat what you serve them, mostly, and never clog the toilet. That's why we have the most pet-friendly rental listings on the internet. And with instant alerts, you'll know the moment your perfect pet-friendly place becomes available. So when you need a place that's pet-friendly and human-tolerant, check out Apartments.com, the place to find your pet-friendly place. It's Not Only Football is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Yo, whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews, news, or even motivational speakers, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue, right? And guess what? Now you can call the shots on your auto insurance too. Enter the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. The Name Your Price tool puts you in charge of your auto insurance by working just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, then they'll show you a variety of coverages that fit within your budget, giving you options. Now that's something you want to press play on. It's easy to start a quote and you'll be easy to choose the best option for you fast. It's just one of the many ways you can save with Progressive Insurance. Quote today at Progressive.com to try the Name Your Price tool for yourself and join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Smash and Mama Smash getting their bank loan refused. And this was in the episode Mm. Blinders. Yeah, we double bungled this because we even, when we talked to Gaius, we talked about, sorry, listeners, friends of the pod. um, We talked about it. After we finished recording. Yes. And this is why I I really wanted to talk about it now because we were walking down to the parking garage and there's just so much that goes into what was your experience on Friday Night Lights like go. And Gaius was awesome on the pod. But oh, you gotta stop saying that. I know. I gotta stop saying cast? that. Jeez. It's not that hard to sit to add the cast. But we went down to the there? parking garage and we were just kind of chatting, and and he was just going on, and he was like, "Oh man, I wish I would have talked about this thing or that thing." And I said, "Well, I know one one scene that we missed when we did the episode blinders was the one with you and your mom and the bank." And he's like, "No, we should have talked about that. Sure. That's mm-hmm. one of my all time favorite scenes." And he told us what he loved about it was that this show doesn't solve injustice. It just lets you know that injustice exists. Mm. And it doesn't give you, here's the solutions, here's the way to fix it. Here's He actually really enjoyed that. And that scene in particular, he remembered because it did feel like him and her against the world. They never worked with any of the other actors in the room. They were in a glass office. And when he starts to get riled up, he said he really did feel like the emotion of that moment as Mm -hmm. Smash. Mama Smash was told by a bank loan officer that they would be pre-approved and maybe be able to buy a house Mm -hmm. and and move into a better place. And they go and they see a home and they fall in love with it. Smash and his sisters, they fall in love with this place. And then you find them in this loan officer's uh, office at the bank and she denies them. Um. This scene I thought was incredible for both Gaius and uh, for Mama Smash. Oh. What do you think? Liz was phenomenal, as she always is. I mean, I don't know what I could say that you haven't just said, mm-hmm. and I don't mean that in like a jokey way. I mean, it just it was great. They're both amazing, and we've said it about so many of the scenes that they share together. Um, you know, uh, they, they just had such a great dynamic together, and they played so well together in everything that they did. And you know, anytime you saw them hurt by the world you hurt right along with them because it it just rings so true Hmm. yeah in his interview episode he said he wishes that modern day acting was more like acting in olden times where you would take like an apprentice on or like you would if you wanted to become an actor you would become an apprentice for like an established actor and he said that's not really an opportunity that's afforded nowadays like you get some of that experience through school but he felt like he was that with Liz Michael, who played Mm. Mama Smash. And in this scene, you kind of feel that. You know, she leads the way being very sharp and very confident in saying, you know, you told me I was going to get this loan. Does this have something to do with the little box you made me check that says, you know, what race I am? And she pulls back a little bit and he loses it. 
And she puts her hand on his shoulder and she says, not right here, not right now. Don't, don't let them, don't let their preconceived notions of you become true to them in their eyes, basically. Yeah. And you see Gaius relent and, and relax in such a unique way. And that scene was beautiful because of that relationship between her and him. And I think because it was that way in real life as well as the characters that they were playing, uh, that's what made that scene so special. Yeah. I want to say one thing too, which has nothing to do with this. A, I completely agree with everything you guys both said. It's almost like it's too special and, and meaningful to even try to add anything because it would be trite because it's just, you said it perfectly. But one thing that I just, uh, side note, when you said the thing about like, you know, walking in the parking garage and being like, oh, we should have said this. We should have said that. I feel like there's a lot. We do that a lot where we'll be like, oh, we should have talked about this. We should talk about that. And, you know, there's a name for it. Do you know what the name of the phenomenon is called? I don't. That, okay. Yeah. This is exciting. It's called, it's French and it's called L'Esprit de Escalier, the spirit of the staircase. I don't know why it's called, why the staircase thing, but I know that that is literally the term for the phenomenon of when you are after an interaction of some kind and it like the perfect response comes to you and you're like, oh, <laughs> I should have said that. It's called L'Esprit de Escalier. L'Esprit de Escalier. Yeah. The, go the, Spirit of the staircase? I think so. The wow. I I, I like that a lot because as actors, that happens to us all the damn time. How yes. often are we in the car on the way home and Every we're time. like after an audition and going, Oh my God. Oh, I should have done that or I should have said. Mine's this, always or... like sassy. Like in a grocery store, if somebody sasses me or something, and I'm <laughs> like, Well, yes to you as well. And then in the car, I'm like, damn it. I, I had something so much I better. I had a better you response. Yeah. Why didn't I say it? <laughs> That's perfect. I mean, for what has happened to us. I mean, because we are covering so much ground here. And thank you to all the listeners for their patience and for yeah. uh, really reaching out to us and letting us know the things that you're missing. Because we want to bring all this to you. And uh, it is really tough to to be able to do it all. I try. Zach hates that I try. I <laughs> try. Maze and in I the middle. I just eat pancakes. Gotta, I just eat pancakes and watch. You got to leave them wanting more. And, and they did um, want more. And the last scene that they wanted more of, which we didn't give them any of at all, is a Riggins Brothers scene. Is a Taylor Kitsch and Derek Phillips scene in the Taylor household and crossing the line. When Coach and Tammy Taylor have invited them over for dinner, just to set the tone, the episode before Tim stopped drinking, went on his sob sober Hulk sober rampage, Hulk. had like 400 yards and six touchdowns and single-handedly won a game. And him. Billy now is in <laughs> full support of him. And Billy is wanting to make sure that his brother, uh, you know, that he does best by his brother. And Coach Taylor sees that and invites him over. And before he does, he says, uh, we're having the Riggins brothers over. Should we slaughter a goat? <laughs> 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 but then they come to dinner and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really, I thought this scene was beautiful. I forgot how little Derek Phillips was in this season. Billy is so impactful in Riggins' life that I feel mm -hmm. like I thought he was always there with Riggins. Well, because the stuff he had was like this, the scene where, the, I guess this was this episode too, where they get in the fight in the kitchen and then, yeah. and all the stuff with their dad and when he comes back after being disappointed by his dad and gives him, you know, like he's, when he's there, he is there. Exactly. He's not just a set piece. May, do you remember this scene? Yes, of course. I The goat thing really made me chuckle. I remember that. And I again, it's one of those scenes where, you know, like one of my favorite things to see in a big, and again, it's, it was sort of the same thing on Parenthood where it's like when you have an ensemble of like 25 main characters, you know, some it usually they kind of split off into their own storylines. And then so when you kind of get to squish everybody together or you have like unlikely pairings or groups of people in one situation, I always like that because as a viewer, you get to kind of be a part of every single little pop God forgive me of the storylines and I feel like it's really it's exciting when you you're you sort of get that they're separate and then they're living it's almost like you're able to have a crossover like episode but in within the episode you know you're like oh yeah this story like these that. people I forgot they live in the same world you crossover know? yeah that I, is the beauty of having a massive cast is like sometimes yeah. people come in and you're like oh Oh my god! I forgot about this one. Yeah. Oh, I love mm -hmm. this character. No, like I told you, I only oh. got to, the only thing I got to do with Minko was flag football. 
And I have like so crazy. two lines I exchanged with Annie over the course of the season. Every time you say this, we discover a scene where you worked with them further. So I'm not <laughs> well, going to. You tell gonna... me. You tell me. It was flag football. That was it. <laughs> okay. Comments, rates, and reviews. <laughs> yeah, rates the scenes re- that yeah, Zach is in. My, my comments. <laughs> Let us know how wrong Zach is in this way. <laughs> um, what I loved about this scene was Billy is being Timmy's champion, which a lot of times you see Billy just like crapping on his little brother. And I think it's because, as Billy says in this scene, you know, he tells this story about his highlights and about how, you know, when he was in high school, he picked up the ball on a fumble and he, has, he saw nothing but daylight and he takes the ball all the way to the house before realizing he's gone to the wrong end zone <laughs> and he's tackled for a safety. And then he turns to Taylor and uh, to Coach Taylor, not Taylor Kitch, Coach Taylor, and says, But I was never really great at sports. Timmy, though. He's got the gift. He's got the world at his fingers. If he keeps playing like he is right now, do you think he's got a chance to to go to school, to get a scholarship? And you can see that Billy wants so much more for Tim. But then a couple of seconds later, Tim knocks over wine, and Billy's like, God damn it! (laughs) And it's just like you see, like the adult, like he, Billy is... Two, two people at war, right? Like a father figure, but still a kid in his own right, trying to raise another kid. Yeah, he's just his brother. You know, he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. It's like last night, my wife knocked over her wine. I said, God damn it, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me and was like, that's a bit of an overreaction. <laughs> I said, you're right. And you I were like, you know towel. what? We have a better help appointment tomorrow. Let's yeah, exactly. Let's hang in. <laughs> but the other thing about this scene that you kind of see is, and because we haven't met the actual dad for the Riggins brothers. Uh, and he's coming up very soon after this scene. Uh, you see Billy really speaking horribly about him and you get a window or a glimpse into uh, what is coming down the pike for, for Tim as he starts to defend his father in this scene. He's like, he sends money every now and then. Billy's like, yeah, two checks in six years is not monetary support, Tim. Ooh. So... Uh, I love this scene. I love all of these scenes, even though we missed them on the first time. But I hope everybody out there that requested us to cover these scenes uh, really enjoyed that segment. Uh, In keeping with people reaching out to us, letting know things they loved, they didn't love, things they'd love to see from us. uh, One of the most requested things in our comment section is Zach to change his outfit. We even had a user (laughs) in Apple Podcast rate and review and two users over on YouTube say that they are going to go as Zach Guilford for th- for Halloween this year. That is an <laughs> honor. I hope I see the photos. That is really funny. That's that's amazing. <laughs> yes, when you dress up like Zach Guilford from the It's Not Only Football podcast for <laughs> Halloween, please uh, be one of his 400 uh, followers yeah. over on Instagram. I'll see it. I'll see it. <laughs> and he will definitely see <laughs> it. Not yeah. a lot to wade through over I'll, there. He's I'll refreshing wait. as we speak. I'll rate and review your photo. One big <laughs> highlight from May, actually, this year, and was the most hashtagged, most trending thing that we ever did in our comment section was Iron Daddy Bowl. There you go. Come on. Everybody Come out on. there, if you didn't hear the Powder Woo! Puff episode, please go back and listen, because Iron Daddy Bowl was lit. I think we got to have an Iron Daddy Bowl this Thanksgiving. We should. Oh, sickening. We, we should make shirts. Come on. We should. Well, we should, like, we'll make shirt. call okay. some... Call some cast members and ask them to come out and like oh, do a little God, like so five on five cliche. flag football Iron Daddy yes. Bowl. Yes, and I'll just sit and watch and yell out Iron Daddy. No, you got to play. Long. You got to play. I You're quarterback. Do May, your quarterback. What does that mean? Running? I don't do that. No, thro- throwing. Do you still okay. want to be the last one picked? Um, I want to be. I don't care about when or where I get picked. I just want to be not. I want to be not involved in anything that has to do with competition because I get so scared when people get competitive. Like even like board games when people are like people play mafia and they're like screaming at each other. Oh, I'm like cowering yeah. in the corner. I'm like, please, I don't understand why this is supposed to be fun. I, I don't just, like it. I just want to sit here and eat my pancakes. Leave me alone, <laughs> <Yes>. please. Where'd <laughs> you get your pancakes, pancakes from again? Where are they from? I got my pancakes from this delicious place called Yang's Kitchen in Alhambra. It's my favorite. Oh. It's a giant, it's a, morch, a mochi cornmeal pancake, and it's like this big. And it comes with 
house made preserves and whipped cream and like condensed milk and you put that on it and oh. it's it, it really is the best i'm a pancake connoisseur and it really is like the best my mouth is watering yangs and alhambra big, you said yes I'll, I'll i'll bring them next time i come Ooh. in the studio and oh. we can all have oh, a please big don't. oh he- please do please do <laughs> um i love i love pancakes you know something else i love that the listeners loved but zach didn't love was love that and that was an amazing transition. Yeah, was a great segue. You like that? Uh, really is good. the listing of our opponents for the Dylan Panthers? I love it. I just like giving one. you a hard time. <laughs> How could you not like it, Zach? I Come did on. not like it. I didn't not like. I didn't not, not like it. Yeah, like I liked it. it. <laughs> um, we uh, this year the Dylan Panthers played against Westerby, who was Westlake High in Austin. Oh, we're gonna read we're gonna, we're South gonna Milbank, this. who was San Marcos. No, I'm Gotta collecting them all, them all for. Baby. I'm collecting them all right here, right now. Scott's for gonna make a T-shirt. And well, because I also made mistakes, <laughs> and I gotta say thank you to the listening audience for correcting me on the mistakes that I actually did make, or the ones that I couldn't figure out. They were there for us. Uh, they hmm. have been there for us all year long, and we appreciate you all. Uh, the Westcott Warriors is the Round Rock Westwood Warriors, which is Glenn Powell's alma mater. And I didn't mm. even tell him when he was on that we actually played against his alma mater. Oh, the spirit of the staircase. Ah, the you spirit of the staircase. You guys a lot of stuff. Spirit of the staircase strikes again. You didn't tell him about my terrible audition or the wilted <laughs> salad either. So spirit of the staircase, spirit of the staircase. I'll tell him okay. next time. Arnett Mead okay. Tigers are based on AM Consolidated. Gatling Eagles or Georgetown Eagles, South Pine, I got this one wrong, is Stony Point and Round Rock. The Leander Lions... I talked about the Lockhart Lions, but I was corrected in the comments. It's actually Larrabee. But I do stand wow. by Lockhart having the most uh, amazing barbecue around. Cool. McNulty Mavericks are the McNeil High School Mavericks. Dunstan Valley is a terrible school in the show, but Dell Valley is where they're from, and we have huge love for Dell Valley. That's where we shot mm. almost everything that we did football-wise. Royal Rock is Round Rock. The Brant Vikings are Bryan, Texas Vikings. And West Cambria, I did get confirmation, is a completely made-up school. The school we wow. beat in the state championship. They ran Never out of schools. Actually existed. Uh, we have a couple of press docs pr- questions before we get out of here and let you guys go. And we start brushing up for season two, episode Ooh. one, which I know, uh, you know, people are nervously excited for. I'm pumped. I'm pumped too. I'm pumped too. Um, we've got Reem Reem on YouTube. He asked a question. If you had a chance to change the end of a storyline in the show, which storyline would you choose and what end would you want it to be? I think I've already said mine. I would love Bobby Reyes to have been a part of our team uh, for the rest of the year. And uh, I don't know what I want the ending to be. I think the writers were very masterful at delivering real life as it stands, not doing after school special. We're going to fix the world. We're going to fix anger or mental health. We're going to fix all these things. Um, you know, just kind of present things. I mean, he had anger issues and I wish we would have been able to work through that a little bit more on the show. What about you, Zach? I I would have um, stuck out that Waverly storyline. I'm curious where that was, where it could have gone. All right. May. I want to see more Tyra's family. More Tyra Collette family I want dynamic. To, I, want I want to see more, see more Tyra's family. I want to see more road like trip of Landry <laughs> driving women. Yes. That's what I want. Yes, the chauffeur. Longer, longer trip next time. Olivia Franick on YouTube reached out and said, what is the funniest or coolest story that you have about being recognized from FNL or Parenthood for May, either during filming or post filming? Oh I'll my start God, off. I have one. Oh, go ahead, May, so, you start I'm off. Gonna, I'm going to say it because it was so cool. It was after I I fell down the stairs drunkenly at the Twilight premiere and uh, split my legs open and I was bleeding. And then we were at the after party and um, Stevie Nicks actually <gasps> came up to me and Miles and was like, excuse me, I just wanted to tell you that I'm a big fan of yours and I love your show. And we were like, here's Stevie Nicks. And we basically, I was like, I just fell down the stairs. Look, I'm bleeding. And I showed her my legs that were bleeding. And she said, and then I like, saw that. And she was like, <laughs> she rings like a bell. Um, she actually was so cool. She like stood there and talked to us for like forever. She really like, we asked her questions about songs and what it was the tour and the past and the stuff. And she was so cool and so gracious. And then years later, she told another friend of ours that she knew. She said, oh, yeah, I know May and Miles. And we 
we are we fell apart that's it so that to me is like i'm i'm almost ready to go lord because you know Made it. that's a big one for me yeah that's awesome what about you zach uh mine is a funny story i don't think i've told this story before so you can stop me if i have so people very often i don't know if this is how it goes for you but a lot of times they'll say to me you you look just like the guy from Friday Night Lights. Mm. I'll say, oh, oh. And my rule of thumb is if they ask me point blank if I mm-hmm. am the guy from Friday Night Lights, I'll say, yes, I am. But if they just keep saying, like, if you heard that before, you must like get that crazy. all the time. I'm like, oh, nuts, whatever. Literally just happened to me at the vet the other day. They didn't ask. I didn't tell. But one time, <laughs> the only time I've ever lied, I was in Florida and I was newly dating my wife. And um, she was like, let's go get pedicures. I was like, I don't need a pedicure. She's like, it's fun. You put your feet in a bath and mm. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, fine. Like, I'm like, I'll do anything she asked me to because I'm just trying to get her to keep me around. And we're sitting in a nail salon and this woman walks by and she's like, oh my God, you look exactly like Matt Saracen from Friday Night Lights. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. And then she asked me, are you? I go, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope, <laughs> Matt Saracen is not getting his toenails done in this salon right now. I I do the I do the same thing that you do, where if somebody's yeah. like, "You look like that guy," and I'm like, "I I just got generic white guy face." That's just I I just that's I must look mm. like him. He's like that's very what, handsome. Huh? That's what I always say. That's true. Uh, because I don't want to do the thing where they're like, "Are you? What are you? Are you on TV? In? What were you in?" And, and then, then you, you list start a... listing your IMDb, oh, no. and, and it's like, the most. No? humiliating no. embarrassing <laughs> oh, yeah. thing ever because they they'll say no seven times yes. before you get to the dunkin donuts commercial you did right. like you're <laughs> like no this is not um for me the coolest one ever was i was at the espies the year after the indianapolis colts beat the chicago bears yeah. sorry zach in miami for the super bowl uh zach is a huge bears fan but i saw peyton at the espies and he was there with his whole offensive line and tight end and he would fly them to every award show with him. That's how he treated his offensive line, like all the time. And I walked up to him and I said, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Congratulations. I'm a Broncos fan, but seeing you get a, uh, a Super Bowl win was really cool. And he goes, oh, no, man. Congratulations to you, season two. Because we had just gotten picked up. And I was like so confused. And I was just blankly looking. And he told me that every Friday he would invite his offensive line and his tight end group over, and they would watch Friday Night Lights while eating dinner together um, as a team. There you go. And that, to me, was like the coolest thing ever. Uh, I've got a really funny story about Sia recognizing me, but it was for Heart of Dixie, so I'll save that for another time. Okay. That's my friend. Sia is your friend? Yeah. She's a huge Heart of Dixie fan. (laughs) Yeah. She's she's the best. Tell her to watch Friday Night Lights. Tell her it's not only football. I bet she's seen it. She's like, she loves all the good stuff. She got great taste. Um, Nikki Gormley on YouTube asked the question, do you ever talk about why some people have Texas accents on this show and some don't? Julie um, Taylor doesn't, but her parents kind of do. Lila Garrity doesn't, but Buddy Garrity definitely does. What's the deal? Uh, I think it was dealer's choice. We all got to have one or not. And, you know, you go somewhere like Austin or a lot of these towns and the accents will run. Some people have absolutely no accent. Some people will have a thick one. And so it really is actually kind of realistic to have the community like that. It's a diverse community. Yep. And that's what Pete wanted. He actually told us all, like, you you pick it, come in, we'll tell you whether we want it or not. And then, you know, a couple of characters don't. I have a very, very, very light one. It's almost not even there. Whereas Saracen definitely has a little bit of a thicker one. Yeah, but, thicker. Um, <laughs> Alito B. Cat on the Apple Podcast Rate and Review section, uh, asks, May, hmm? why did you never talk about working with Kyle Chandler on season one of Early Edition in an episode called The Choice? What do you remember about working with Kyle Chandler when you were like, what, six years old? <laughs> I Great question. I thought that I had talked about it, and if I didn't, it's because I thought no one wanted to hear I want to hear it. Okay. Well, basically, yeah, I knew him before all y'all, as they say. (laughs) How old were you for that episode? I probably was actually about six years old tops like that. I might have even been five, but I might have been six. And it was so much fun. It was like my first time really like working in Chicago. And I ended up doing Chicago Hope like later for years and spending time there. But it was like my first time in the city and it was so much fun. And, you know, it was like this really cool premise of a show where it's like a guy starts getting a newspaper, you know, from the next day, but he gets it a day early. And then he has to basically try to like, oh my God, there's a terrible thing about to happen. I have to try to go 
make it not happen, you know, since I have the heads up. And so basically the episode that I do with him is like, you know, there's, he sees that on the same day there's a big bus crash that kills a bunch of people and also this little cutie gets killed on a tricycle and you're like, oh no, and he's like, oh my God, who am I going to choose? Wait, and, let me guess, you know, you're the little cutie on the tricycle? No, I'm the bus driver. Yes, <laughs> I'm the cutie on the tricycle. And basically <laughs> he's like, bus driver. for some reason he <laughs> chooses the cutie on the tricycle. I mean, I'm look at me, but he like, he's like running and you're like, oh my God, who's he going to save? And then it's me and he gets there too late and I get hit by the car <gasps> and I'm laying in the road and he scoops me up and he's holding me and I'm like bleeding out of my nose and there's like, he's looking at me and I'm looking at him and he rushes me to the hospital and it's a whole thing. And basically... Long story short, by saving me, there's something where, you know, my dad was the bus driver and he didn't go to work that day because of the thing. And it's, but basically, he ended up saving the bus as well as saving me. And I remember, A, being like, I am young, but I have feelings and this guy is hot and I know it in my bones. <laughs> and I six also years old. remember being like, he's so fun and so cool and so kind. And then at the ATX, um, Austin TV festival that we go to and do Friday night light stuff there all the time. Um, I remember I saw him again after 20 years, 25 years, whatever it was. And we recreated the picture of him <laughs> holding me and me like passed out in his arms. So I have like a side by side of like me at six and him holding me. And then the same thing of him like holding me up and I like look all dead in his arms and stuff. It's really cute. If you have those images, please send them to I us do. so we can put it on the YouTube. Uh, feed for everybody that watches on Smart. YouTube. That would be awesome. Yes. Um, we have a couple of more questions. One is very silly. Uh, <laughs> Riggins, in the this is by a, a user called Has Riggins Ever Bowled <laughs> on Apple Podcast <laughs> Rate Review. And upping the end of the episode, Riggins bowls all night long without putting his fingers into any of the holes. Is this actually a thing? Or does he <laughs> just not know how to how to bowl is he a caveman? And the answer is yes. Uh, you are allowed to bowl without putting your fingers in the hole. It allows really? you to get a lot of spin on the ball. Yes, it is. The USBC, the United States Bowling Conference, uh, allows you to bowl without putting your hands in any of these steadying holes uh, if you would like to. And very often people do it so that they can get that spin on the ball. Yeah. And, I don't put uh, my thumb in. I only use my two fingers. You don't put your thumb in? No, Just two fingers? <laughs> okay. Uh, which FNL character, and this is by Hannah BYC 2013 on Apple Podcast Rate and Review. We've kind of answered this, so it could should be pretty quick. But at the end of the season, I wanted to revisit it because I think we answered it very early on. Which FNL character do you relate the most to? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's kind of hard. It's like I'm the closest to my character. And, you know, not, not like... And like I because we shit on you all the time. Yeah, because you guys <laughs> poop on me all the time. Um, but I am kind of like a keep my head down and do hard work kind of guy. And uh, so I mean, you know, not that there aren't other characters like that on the show, but uh, you know, it's so close to him, it's hard to relate not to him. It would be easy for me to say street, but I think at this point in my life, watching the show back and watching everything that Coach and Tammy go through, as far as like learning still how to be parents, how to be a couple in a relationship. I think now I relate to coach the most, you know, life wow. is full of really tough decisions and really hard things. And you're constantly questioning yourself on whether or not you're doing the right thing. And watching the two of them together, uh, is, is so cool, uh, to watch. So yeah, I, there'll always be some, a street in me, highly competitive nature, all that stuff, you know? Um, but yeah, watching it back now, I feel like I really, I'm like watching coach going, what are you going to do, man? Oh, this is so tough, you know? <laughs> Give me some advice, brother. Uh, what about you, May? Um, I feel like Landry. Mm. I don't know. I think it's like oh, there's something it. in the sardonic sardonic nature. This, you know, there's just something about it. Like, I feel like the, the defense mechanism of humor, uh, that's big for me. We love that in this house. And like, you know, feeling a little bit like on the outside and kind of being like, I don't want to do that thing. And I just kind of want to be a smart ass about it. Um, but then also, you know, ultimately being pretty cool on the in the inner layers. You know what I'm saying? You are. And we 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 want you to be on the inside. We love you. No. 
No, I like I like it out here. I can stretch my <laughs> arms and watch, and you know, it's cool. Uh, well, that's going <laughs> to wrap it up for the press box. That's actually going to wrap it up for our entire kind of season one recap episode. Uh, we'll give you a couple of final thoughts on how great we thought the season was on a scale of one to ten in a moment. But I do want to point out to the other hosts, we need to be aware of this. Someone asked us multiple times in the Apple Podcast Rate and Review section to keep a tracker on the times that Coach Taylor says the fact of the matter is. Mm. Uh, and I'm not going to go back and do it in season one. It's too much work. Uh, but, but I've already started in season can two. Bet your bottom dollar that Scott <laughs> will do it for season two. I will yes, do it for can. season two. I can tell you he says it once in the first episode of season two already. Maybe even we could also add, what are you doing to the list? Because <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's a bunch of that. What, what are you doing? To, uh, sit, take a seat. There sit is. Sit down. I, you know what I'm saying? That too. Sit down. I like that sit one as well. Sit down is big. Um, we loved this entire journey with all of you out there listening, uh, much like we want May slash Landry to, to be on the inside. We're so appreciative you. that you were here on the inside with us, just <laughs> watching this whole season once again. Uh, we love and appreciate everybody out there. Um, season one of Friday Night Lights, I said it after State, uh, as much as it bummed Zach out, uh, this season to me was a very special season of television. I give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, Zach, what about you? I give it a seven. What? It's because it's your number. Yeah, come on. Oh, I like that. What about I you, May? That. Did it hold up for somebody who is just a huge fan and a lifelong fan of Friday Night Lights? I'll say this. It goes to 11. Yes! I love it. Well, why not just make 10 louder? It goes to 11. <laughs> because and it, it goes to 11, mate. <laughs> it goes to 11, and do so does the drama in season two, which will be starting next week. Uh, with season two, episode one. We can't wait to see you all then uh, for Maybe myself. Maybe we'll get a different outfit. Oh, yeah. It's in my bag. From the big boy. <gasps> Just uh -oh. you wait. Your next we Halloween costume is about to start showing up in season two, uh, episode one. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much, everybody out there. On behalf of Zach Guilford, May Whitman, I say clear eyes. Bull hearts. Can't lose. Peace. <laughs>